Hi, I'm Becky from Let's Make Geek Stuff, and today I'm making this Fennec Shand helmet. You've seen this assassin in the Book of Boba Fett, in the Mandalorian, in the Bad Batch, and this helmet is made out of inexpensive anti-fatigue floor mats that you can buy at many do-it-yourself stores. The pattern I'm using today is available on my Etsy shop. A link is provided in the info section of this video, as well as a list of all the materials you'll need. I'm using these anti-fatigue floor mats. I bought these at a discount hardware store for around $10 uh, for four. You can buy them at the big do-it-yourself box stores for about $25. Um, the advantage of these is cost. It's just the cheapest way to build a helmet. If you want a nicer quality, a nicer, denser EVA foam, you can buy the Kraft EVA foams at craft stores. You really want a anti-fatigue floor mat that has a very subtle textured backing. If some of them have like these very large knobby backings, and these are really hard to work with, I would not recommend buying this kind. I've cut out all my pattern pieces. Again, this uh, pattern is available on my Etsy shop. Um, now I'm gonna cut out all the little notches on it. Um, these notches help us get all the pieces together. They're super important. So I just cut them out like that. This pattern also has some notches that are like on the inside of the pattern pieces. And I'm just gonna cut those out with an X-Acto knife. Trace on your pattern pieces. I'm using a white wax pen just so you guys can see it. At home, just use a permanent marker or a ballpoint pen. Uh, avoid gel pens because those just rub off and get all over your hands. I've also gone ahead and labeled these with some shorthand. Uh, mark all the notches, do all the labeling, you'll thank yourself later. Since so many of these pieces need two, one regular and one mirrored, it's best if you can cut them at the same time. If you have a bandsaw or a scroll saw with a fine tooth blade, that is really ideal. But if not, you can go ahead and cut them out with your utility knife and that should work just fine. Okay, now I just have to make sure to transfer all my markings to my new pieces. So I'll just have to flip my pattern piece upside down and just put in the markings. I've set aside my brim pieces for now and we're gonna focus on making the dome first. I've marked all the notches on these pieces. The one thing I have not marked yet is this glue line right here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut this out and then I'm gonna trace this glue line onto this pieces because this glue line's pretty important for getting the helmet to be the right shape in the end. I have my dome pieces all cut out. They've all been labeled. The glue line has been labeled. And now my next step is to heat and shape them. I've marked the heating spot from the pattern onto my piece here. That's gonna be the apex of the dome I'm gonna to try to create with each, each individual piece. I'm gonna use my knee as kind of an anvil. I've covered it with a terry cloth just to protect it from heat. Just kinda of, kind of let it cool as I stretch it out over my knee that H circle being over my kneecap. And when it cools, it looks like this. My pieces are all heat shaped and now I'm ready to glue them together. There's a few different ways you can go. I prefer contact cement. Uh, this is just the one that's available at my local hardware store. I understand there's some better brands you can buy online, but this one works fine for me. You know when contact cement is ready because it loses its shiny. This is where it pays to be very slow and careful. It's so much easier to create a beautiful seam the first time than to try to go back and fix seams. It's going to be really careful to line up all the notches. I have one section that didn't glue for whatever reason. Maybe I didn't put enough glue on it in the first place. So that's pretty easy to fix. I'm just gonna put contact cement on a toothpick. I'm gonna rub it into the seam, making sure that contact cement gets on both sides of the opening. And then I'm just gonna let it dry and glue it back together. You'll never even know that this happened. Now that our dome is glued, 
I'm going to hit it with heat again, and I'm gonna do more shaping over my knee here to give it kind of an overall curved dome shape that I want. Just gonna take a moment, I'm gonna look at it. Is it symmetrical? Is it the shape I want? If there's anything I don't like, I'm gonna reheat and keep shaping. I'm pretty happy with this. Now let's start on the brim. I have all my brim pieces cut out, labeled, and I have them laying here in the order that they'll need to be glued in. But before we glue them all together, there's a few things we need to do first. I wanna show you on this completed raw helmet here. See how this brim piece glues to the dome. Now, this material I'm using, the inexpensive floor mat material, has this backing, and this backing does not glue very well to itself. So we're gonna to need to dremel out a piece here to um, take the backing out. And we'll want to do that before we glue them together. Now, if you have, if you're working with a nicer foam that doesn't have this backing, you can skip this step. I'm gonna be using a low grit sanding barrel on my Dremel. At this point, I don't want a polished look. I just want to chew through that backing as fast as possible. I dremeled all around this surface that will be glued to the dome. There's another area we need to Dremel. Let me show you on the helmet. On this back piece, this area also will be glued to this supporting piece here. And so I will also need to Dremel the back piece and these two side rims. I think they're side rim C, I think is the, call, the name of these. So I'll be Dremeling those. Dremeling is done, but there's another thing I wanna do before I start gluing these pieces together. It has to do with this piece right here. You'll see on the helmet, there's these vents right here. Um, that's pretty tricky to do. And I'm gonna talk about what some of the options are. But first, we're gonna take this template from the pattern piece and apply it to our piece. One option that I haven't had a lot of success with, but might work for you if you're willing to put in the time, is uh, using a leather punch to punch large holes at the top and the bottom of each slit, and then with an X-Acto knife, cutting between the holes. The option that I chose to go with is I used a wood burner to burn these crevices into the holes, and then I'll clean them up when I paint them. Uh, that's a pretty easy option. Make sure you do this in a garage or outside because the fumes are toxic. I have my wood burner. I recommend doing tons of practicing on scrap pieces. Different uh, wood burning tips, different temperatures are gonna give you vastly different results. So practice uh, the speed, the temperature, until you have a result you're happy with. Now we're gonna look at this bevel that's around this rim. The absolute easiest way to do this is with a tilted table scroll saw or band saw. But if you're doing this by hand, uh, you'll probably wanna bevel each piece individually and I'll show you how to do that. I brought my piece to the end of my work table and I'm gonna use one of these utility knives with the snap off blades. I'm gonna extend the knife and then I'm going to tilt the blade to the beveled angle I want and then using a gentle sawing motion, I'm gonna saw in that bevel. My next step then would be to glue all these rim pieces together and clean it up with a Dremel. And because I wanted a nice smooth surface, I used a high grit sanding barrel first and I'm gonna use a low grit one next. And I don't want this ragged edge, so I'm gonna trim that with scissors. For those of us lucky enough to have a bandsaw, the process is a lot easier. I'm just gonna glue these together and cut them on my tilt table. We're ready to attach the brim to the dome. And this is where all the markings we made are really gonna pay off because the markings are gonna line up on this glue line 
all the way around the helmet. I'm going to glue where we dremeled out on the underside of the brim and then along this lower glue line on the dome. We're also going to close up the brim when we're done wrapping it, so we'll need to glue the ends of the brim as well. Okay, gluing this on is a little tricky. Luckily, um, contact cement is a little forgiving. You can uh, pull it up a little, as long as you don't pat it down firmly. You can pull it up and readjust before you like firmly press it in. I'm gonna keep this piece of parchment paper. This is just parchment pa paper from the baking aisle of the grocery store. It helps me have things not glue that I'm not ready to glue yet. So it's a pretty handy tool. Uh, we're gonna start by lining up the center front because that's the money shot and then we're going to wrap around and hopefully if everything goes well it will glue together in the back lining up this center notch at the center front we're just going to walk it around and line up the notches I'm kind of pushing and pulling as I go to get everything to line up the way I want it to. This is the back notch. See that didn't go. I'm going to pull gently, reposition. Hopefully this back notch will line up exactly in the back and it does. Okay. Before sealing that off, I'm going to throw parchment paper right there. And we'll get this front. Foam is pretty flexible. It's stretchy. It's pretty forgiving. That's why I love working with it. I'm putting my fingers between the brim and the dome because I don't want to glue that yet. I want the brim to glue together. first. Okay. And now I'm going to let the dome just slowly pull my fingers out, place this where I want it to be. Like that. I'm going to finish pressing that together. All right. If there's any little oddities or anything, don't worry. When you paint, you'll probably be doing a dark wash in here. It's going to hide any little imperfections. Okay. I'm going to work on this back flap now. Um, here's the piece. I have dremeled off the backing around the top. That's where we're going to be gluing it. Again, if you're using the better quality EVA foam from a craft store that doesn't have backing, you can skip this step. I also have the hinge support piece here. There's some guidelines on the pattern and I have transferred them to my piece. I'm going to start now by gluing these darts together to start giving it a rounded shape. I'm just going to shape it a little. You can add some heat here if you'd like, but I just want this in kind of a curved, rounded shape. We're going to line up this back notch with this center notch, and this is where our guides come in. Uh, you'll see this curve in the ear sits right there. So that's how it's going to glue in. We're going to glue. We're going to line up the center here at the glue line and this glue line I'm going to glue this on. I'm going to be mindful of lining up the center notches. 
I'm also going to be really mindful of this space to try to make it um, equal across. I'll do that by just stretching and pulling the foam as I lay it down. Just gonna get that empty space a shape I want before I pull out this paper. I wanna squish it in a little more up here. All right, that seems to be lined up pretty well. That, glue that first, the side piece first. Make sure it's lining up the way I want it to. I'm ready to work on the mask. One thing we need to do before we glue this together, it has to do with this curve here. On the mask, there's this seamless curve across the front. So how we're gonna achieve that is we're going to do on this centerpiece an undercut. So I've turned my centerpiece over. About two thirds from the bottom, I'm gonna cut a V of material out. It's, I'm gonna go about a little over half deep. This cut is gonna allow the foam to bend in the front without there being a seam. To get more of the shape at the bottom of the front of the helmet that I want, I'm gonna kind of dremel out a little V shape down here. And it looks like that. If you line up the hash marks, it's gonna give the foam the shape that we need. When you glue this together, it's important to kind of push and pull and line up all the edges and hash marks. That will give us the internal tension in the foam so when we heat it and shape it, it will naturally take the shape that we want. This hash mark in the middle lines up with this seam. There it is. I'm now going to heat this and do some shaping of the visor to help it relax into the shape that I want. Cutting the mask details out of this two millimeter craft foam I got at the craft store. Putting this front detail over the front of the mask, I have gone in with my Dremel and uh, sanded down some of the seams because irregular seams are going to show through this overlay. We're going to heat this and shape this so that it matches this shape on the front of the mask. Gluing on this overlay, I'm thinking about two things. I want no wrinkles in the overlay at all. So I'm gonna stretch and go really slow. I'm gonna apply heat if I need to get there no wrinkles. And I want the edges to be clean. I've drawn on the edge, it comes with a pattern um, that I'm gonna line them up on. The top and the bottom can overlap, there's no problem because I can cut that off. Just gonna go really slow. The fact that my edges don't really line up with my guideline doesn't worry me so much as long as I can get the other side to line up the same. I just really want the sides to be the same.
Now I'm gonna hit this with heat to get the whole thing to relax, and then I'm gonna cut out any overlap with scissors. Now we're gonna work on this side detail right here. I'm gonna glue these on top of that. These pieces glue right here on the side, like that. I'm gonna go ahead and mark where to put my glue. This edge lines up right underneath the hinge piece. And this edge lines up right at the brim. Cut this 12 millimeter wide strip of the thinner craft foam to do the mask detail. And I'm just gonna glue that on. You can see I've thrown some small pieces in there to bridge the gaps. So when I lay over the top trim, it'll be even. I cut a couple strips out of the thin craft foam and I'm going to put a trim around the whole helmet. Um, I'm gonna have to have seams, but I don't want those seams to be in the front. So I'm gonna be sure that those seams happen on this side. Here's the pieces I need to make the hinge. I'm using these wood cutouts I bought at my craft store. I've also cut a dowel into a short piece, just a little thicker than the foam. I've drummled out the covering on this foam so it will take glue. So we're just gonna build a simple hinge. That's gonna get glued to that, that's gonna get glued there. And then when the time has come, I've drilled a hole in the top of this dowel. I'll use this tiny little screw to put it all together. I want the whole thing to stick out just for the visual effects, but then I also kind of want to get it tilted back a little. I mean, there's no science to this. It's just how you want it to look. The visor is done, and I just need to figure out where to put the hole in the helmet to hold it in place. I'm just gonna hold it up to see where I visually want it. Okay, now I'm just gonna press down, and it leaves the mark right there. That's where I need to put my hole. To make this hole, I'm gonna use this leather punch that's a little bit smaller than the dowel that I'm using for the hinge, just so it has that tightness, so it grips and holds the visor in place. If you don't have a leather punch, you can just use a small X-Acto knife to cut a little round circle. Just make sure that it's smaller than the dowel so that you have that friction. Now with this one temporarily in place, I am going to measure the other side. I recommend um, painting these separately and maybe not putting them this together until you're ready to do final painting details. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and attach this. Before I assembled this, I drilled a hole in my dowel there. I drilled a hole in the center of this smaller circle. I'm just gonna put this screw in there. In the future, if I need to do touch-up paint or anything on this, I can just screw it out and take the visor right off. I realized I had forgotten to do this top detail. Um, so let's do it now. This is five millimeter, that thicker craft foam. Uh, for me to get it to go into this bevel the way I'd like, I'm gonna bevel these edges a little with a Dremel.
see how that fits. It's deceptively difficult to put a strip like this across the exact center of the helmet. So I'm gonna make myself some guidelines to glue between. I want that front lip to glue. I want that back to line up perfectly. Now this helmet's definitely gonna need some upholstery foam to dampen the movement and have it sit on your head correctly. And then just hot glue it right inside the helmet. There's a few more details you can add. There's one up front here. Um, there's a little extra detail on this hinge. Look at the source material. You can build that out more with foam or you could paint it in. It's up to you. Uh, but this phase of construction of the helmet for me is done. Thanks for joining me for this fun project. The patterns available on my Etsy shop, links are in the comments, as well as patterns to Boba Fett and Bo-Katan and some other classic helmets. Shoot me any questions you have in the comments.